Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I want to talk to you about the question of should I buy a gas engine or should I be a diesel engine? And among some people, that's a pretty pretty strong feelings there. Some are very positively diesel, some are very positively gas. I'll be honest with you, I have for a very long time now been very, very positively gas and don't recommend diesel. Um, but there's a little bit of a, a twist now because right there behind me is a, a Duramax diesel 6.6. That's a 2011 uh, Chevy and it's on the ambulance as you probably know. And so now I am a diesel owner. And so it's a little, it's a little weird, isn't it? Here I'm this guy that had always been selling you for a long time not to buy a diesel. And so I thought I, I should give you some explanation. I really do not want a diesel. I am not, I am no longer a fan. There was a time when I was a big fan of diesels, but those days are past. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a history. In the 90s, uh, Cummins put a diesel inside of their Dodge pickup, and it was their, uh, their inline six diesel, and the thing is just fantastic. It was, in the early days, there was no turbos, there was no electronics, they were just a pure raw diesel engine. And then Ford started putting their, I think they started with a 6.7, then it went to 6.9, then it went to 7.3, the legendary 7.3 Ford. And I think when it started too, it also was just a pure diesel. No, no electronics, no computers, no turbos. And uh, they were just, they'd run forever. I mean, when, when you talk about a million mile engine, those were million mile engines and virtually trouble free million mile engines but the problem was they were gutless i mean they were gutless wonders you put any weight on them and they couldn't climb a hill they couldn't do anything and so uh, the manufacturers had to solve that problem and so they started putting in uh turbos and so the turbo gave you drastically more power and um and but but with the turbo came drastically more complexity also uh diesels put out particulate matter and they put out a lot of particulate matter and what happens this particulate matter is when you breathe it it gets in your lungs this teeny tiny little particles and it gets in your lungs and it stays there forever if you get a particulate in your lung when you are 10 years old when you die at 89 that particulate will still be in your lung unless you got a lung removed it's there for life and of course it accumulates and so uh, as diesels became more and more a part of people's lives, the particulates became a bigger and bigger and bigger bill, deal. As the gas, with the gas crisis of 70s and gas prices exploded and as they have for a very long time now, people wanted to get better gas mileage as well. The little tiny ga diesel engines could get great gas mileage. And so a lot of people started, Europe in particular, switched all over to, to diesel, small, tiny diesel engines in tiny cars. And, so they started adding complexity to get more power because us Americans like power. And if you're going to buy a pickup, you don't want it to be gutless and not be able to climb a hill and not be able to tow a load. So they got more and more powerful, more bigger, better turbos. And, and they also, the EPA demanded that they not kill people. <laughs> and make no mistake, diesels kill people. In the long run, if you, were, if you lived at a truck stop, and there's always trucks coming and going all day. If you live there all your life, you're going to live a shorter life because your lungs are going to be full of particulates. So they, they kill people. That's, that's an established, proven fact. I mean, it's not, it's not the nanny state just hyperventilating about every tiny little thing. They kill people. Um, and so they, the EPA put on regulations. They tightened the standards. Uh, very low sulfur fuel, diesel fuel is one of them. It, it puts out less particulates just because of the type of fuel. The agents had to be adjusted to the fuel. So that was a big thing back, I believe, in 2007. I'm not exactly sure of the history. At any rate, they got more compli complicated. They got more powerful. They make too much noise, so they made them quieter. They rumble and they jumble and they vibrate and they made them more steady. And all these things they did to make them palatable to the American buying public made them incredibly complex, difficult machines until today, that 6.6 in there is a really complex machine. And the bottom line here is that, and it's got an incredible amount of horsepower. That thing is screaming. I'm telling you, the one thing I love about that Duramax 6.6 is I never give a thought to a hill. A hill's coming, I step on the gas. I don't even take it off cruise. 
I see a hill coming. I don't even take it off cruise. The cruise will just pull me up. It might step down. It's got the Alice and Tranny in there. That's the thing of joy. It might step down, but it'll just pull me right up any hill. No man, I got a very heavy. I'm at over 13,000 pounds on my um, on my ambulance. It's very heavy. But all of this complexity has added up to that rock solid million mile engine is no longer a rock solid, uh, uber reliable. Never going to put any work into it. That's what you got in 1969 out of those early diesels they were putting in pickups, the Cummins, the Fords. Now I'm figuring this, any modern engine, after, especially after 2007, after 2007, um, the EPA said, uh, you know, you're really killing a lot of people. We got to clean up the emissions, the particulate emissions. And so uh, they've really gone crazy. This is a 2011 and it has death diesel exhaust fluid and actually I need to put diesel exhaust fluid in this and I'm going to show you that process so you'll know what DEF is and what you're going to have to contend with if you if you buy a DEF engine uh, diesel. 2011 was the, they, they mandated it in 2010 and 2011 the DEF systems came out this was the first year. Had I realized all that I might have gone out of my way to buy a 2010 but I wanted this particular ambulance. Very very low miles is why I bought this and the Duramax. I don't want a Ford I do not want a Ford diesel. Boy, I'm going to get letters out of that. Dry Ion, tell me what you want. If you're going to buy a diesel today, who you should buy? Well, you should, the, the Cummins in the Dodge is by far the best diesel engine. Uh, by far the best diesel engine. The truck is not all that good. And I'll get letters about that too. They've improved. They're getting better and better. The best truck is by far the Ford. I would rather own a Ford truck than a Chevy truck because it's got the, the straight front axle. They're more heavy duty. I, I it Better. The Ford truck's a better truck. Okay, uh, Chevy's next, uh, Dodge is last, as far as the truck itself. The engine, the Cummins in the Dodge is by far the best. I personally believe this uh, this Duramax is second, and a very close second, and I could even make an argument that it's better than the Cummins, and there'll get lots of letters about that. Get out your pen and start writing, typing away. Um, I would argue that the Duramax is at least as good and maybe better than that Cummins. Um, and the Fords, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't buy the Ford diesel, I just wouldn't. And then finally, there's a transmission, because I tell you what is going to cost you probably as much or more in the long run is the transmission in these things. The early transmissions were just pickup trucks. They beefed them up a little bit, and the engine, the diesels just destroyed them. You were putting new engines, rebuilding them, and they, uh, an industry grew out of rebuilding diesel engine transmissions. And so um, they said, if you rebuild it this way, and you spend this $10,000 on this rebuild, that's an exaggeration, but you spend a lot, then they would last forever, okay? Because when they came out of the factory, they weren't going to last very long at all. Hundred thousand miles on of a diesel was tranny was good. Well, this is the Allison, and <laughs> it's a lifetime tranny. I don't ever expect to have any work done on this tranny. I'm going to take really good care of it, and I don't I don't expect to have trouble out of this Allison. That's not going to be true of the Ford or the Dodge. So, to my mind, looking at the whole package, a Chevy pickup with a Duramax and an Allison is the best money you can spend right now today. A lot of you Ford dealers are going to not are not going to like that. It's my opinion and I could be well be wrong, but it's over the opinion I've formed over the years. So when I bought this, I did the Carfax on it and got the listing of all the problems and all the all the issues that it had with it. And where I bought it from that that ambulance de dealer had a number of uh of Fords. And so I checked, I got the VINs on all of them and checked them all. So if you go and look at the Carfax on any Ford diesel built in the last 10 or 15 years, it's just going to be a constant long list of going into the shop. It's all under warranty. After the six, Ford could not build another crap diesel and then not back it up. They knew it. So now at least they back up the crap diesels that they're making. And so they just put them under extended warranty. They're not calling them recalls. They're calling them extended warranties. And so when the bad parts they put out break, they put it under warranty and they fix it for longer. Eventually, the warranty is going to run out and it's still going to break again. Um, and so that's why. And so I look at the Carfax on these things and just reinforce my idea. I would never buy a Ford diesel under any conditions. Uh, every repair on a diesel is going to be Five to ten thousand dollars, whereas it would be one to five on a gas engine. On a diesel, it's going to be ten, five, ten, fifteen thousand. Enormously expensive. In the over the course of its life, you're going to spend much, much more 
keeping a diesel on the road. Now you're not even getting better gas mileage anymore, and you got to fuss with the with the death. And and you know, there's just there is not a reason. There's only there's one reason. Other than this one reason, there's no reason to buy a diesel. And the one inescapable reason is the things can carry loads like you can't believe. I got 13,000 pounds on this thing because it's an ambulance and they're big and heavy. And it just runs up pills like it doesn't exist. If you have to tow weight, nothing will compete with the diesel. Even the best of the gas engines today just aren't going to compete with that diesel. And then and then in the long run, it will probably end up pay, costing you less. But that's the only reason. Uh, if you just want to drive it around town, you know, these things are a pain in the butt. You've got starting them in the winter is a pain. Starting them when they're cold is a pain. Uh, uh, the noise, the exhaust, the, 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 the power curve isn't nearly as pleasant as a gas engine. Um, it's just different. It's really different. Now, I love driving this thing out on mountain roads, surprisingly. It's got the dualies, and it's pretty low, and man, it just runs runs up and down mountains, and it runs curvy roads really, really well, and I don't know, really know why, but I love driving it on the highway and on the freeway. You put, set the cruise, and man, you just go straight down the road and just purrs away. There we go. That's just food for thought. It's just my personal opinion. Uh, a lot of, most of you will disagree. You're going to tell me the Cummins is by far better and you should buy the Dodge because it's the better in every way. And a lot of you are going to have right in and really tell, tell me where I'm wrong about Ford. Um, it's just food for thought. It's my opinion. I'm not in any way trying to reduce your opinion. Your opinion is I, the vast majority of people I know love Ford diesels and I love Ford trucks. And so, I'm not arguing with any of you. I'm just telling you I have a different opinion, and this is why. Now let's talk about DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. So here's the way it works. Uh, after, after the engine has exploded and burned the fuel and the valve is opened and it's going into the exhaust, once it's into the exhaust system, it's squirting in this DEF, and, and that is burning in the high heat. Of that's coming through there and burning off the last of the particulates. So it's burning off a lot more particulates. It's killing a lot less people because of that. And it's not, it's not, it's just in every way it's better. And it, it adds another layer of complexity. Here you've got another computer to run the DEF. You've got sensors to know the particulate levels and, and to control the injector and how much DEF it's putting in there. It's another computer Another uh, message that pops up on my screen. It just popped up. That's why I'm putting new def in. You let these things run out of def and it goes into limp mode and it won't go more than five miles an hour and you can limp home on the side of the road and get it by some def and put it in. So uh, def is now, uh, it's not urine. That's going to be what, let me just clear that up right now. It's not horse urine. It's urea. But urea, not all urea is horse urine. I mean, there's other kinds of urea other than horse urine. It's not horse urine. It's not people urine. It's not urine. All right, so I'm going to put the def in. As you can see, I'm up under the hood of my Duramax. And where the filler is for the tank, there's the, these things all have a tank. And it's about, uh, uh, this is a two and a half gallon jug. And that's what you almost always buy. I think you can get them in one gallon, but almost everyone buys two and a half gallons. And I think they must have like a three or four gallon tank somewhere on them. The filler is in different places on different trucks. On this year, model year of Chevy Duramax, they're under the hood. Now the big, the truck stops will have def at a pump and you pump it just like you do, um, just like you do the diesel. And the big trucks have big tanks because they're going through lots and lots of it. And so uh, you can actually go to the island at truck stops and fill your tank there directly. Um, but for most of us, we're buying the two and a half gallons at a time. I just wait till it runs out. You want to buy it at Walmart if you can, but man, so many, I rarely can find it at Walmart. It's always sold out. This, so I paid, this was like $30 at Love's and I got it on sale for like 22. And um, at Walmart, it's like 10. So you want to buy it at Walmart if you possibly can. But um I don't like carrying it around. It's big, it's heavy, it's bulky, it takes up room. And so I just buy it when the when the computer comes up on the dash and says, hey, you are got to feel deaf the next 600 miles, I stop and buy it, and then I fill it. And that's what we're doing here today. Okay, so uh, the inlet is right here. 
I've just popped off the, uh, the cap. I like to, um, you're, gonna, you're probably gonna spill a little bit. I've never had a major spill, but even so, I like to kind of stuff some paper towel around it. So if I spill, it's really important uh, with the death that you buy fresh death. It goes bad, it's dated somewhere. Oh, I should look to see if this has a date on it. I try and buy it only at places that I'm confident. Um, it always comes with its own spout. I get the black thing up on top so we can vent air. It's kind of a matter of gauging this, dropping it down, and now it's going in, and that's it. And I'll have to lift this up. You can hear it going in. Uh, you can control, if it starts to come out too fast, you can just change the angle and it'll slow down. Okay, and so that's it. No big deal. You just have to do it, you know, every so often. It's just part of the joys of owning a modern diesel. Okay, one last thing I want to cover, and that's something called a delete. That means you go in and you, uh, you, you mostly you hire someone to do it, if, unless you are a mechanic and know how to do it yourself. Most of us don't. And you go in and you remove all the exhaust emissions things on the rig. Um, it's illegal. I'm certain it's illegal. If you do it, if you're caught in the act of doing it, I think the fines uh, would be big. Uh, and you're killing people. I mean, uh, and again, I know, you, nanny state, nanny state. It's just all nothing. It isn't. People are dying. Uh, Europe has essentially banned uh, diesels in city centers because people were dying right and left of, of uh, you know, older people in particular have accumulated these things all their life and they're, they're going to die. So um, I don't do a delete. <laughs> I thought about it, you know, like everyone else, I thought, well, I could get rid of all this crap, but I uh, know that's a bad idea. It's, uh, you don't want to kill people. That's just that simple. Part of the agreement of modern society that we're going to live, a lot of us, in a small space and we're going to give up some of our rights and the rights to kill each other by deleting your diesel is one of the rights you got to give up. That's yeah, just the way it works. We give up the right to punch each other in the nose, to shoot each other. We give up to steal from each other, to hurt each other. But you don't get to hurt me with uh, taking off your diesel emissions. That's just not the way it works. You can't do that. All right. So uh, that's it. That's all I have to say about diesels and... Um, why I've got one and I've actually kind of liked it so far. I got to tell you, every time I climb a hill with this thing and it just powers itself way up it, like better than any van I've ever owned, any vehicle I've ever owned, I do like it then quite a bit. Okay, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.